Hello everyone, welcome to Coding Decoded. My name is Sanjay Rudeja. I am working as Technical Architect SD4 at Adobe and here I present Day 6 of June Lead Code Challenge. The problem that we have in today's Fibonacci number, it's an easy level question on Lead Code which forms the core basics of dynamic programming. And you will ask me guys that uh, this is a very trivial question who have been associated to the channel. I believe most of them will be able to solve this question by themselves and this video I have talked about three approaches to come up with the algorithm. And Typically, in all dynamic programming questions, we tend to focus on the time complexity because dynamic programming is nothing but memoization plus recursion. It's a combination of these two aspects. However, today we are going to talk about how to reduce the space complexity of all the dynamic programming questions of 1D type from order of n to constant space. Yes, from order of n to constant space across all the dynamic programming questions of 1D array. Yes, that's true. Without further ado, let me just break the suspense and let's walk through a very typical example of Fibonacci number lead code 509. And this is a typical way of writing the Fibonacci result wherein we have created a DP array of size order of n. We have initialized DP of 0 to 0, DP of 1 to 1 and we have started a for loop starting from i equals to 2 going up till i equal to n. And with each, with each iteration, we increment the value of i. We calculate db of i as db of i minus 1 plus db of i minus 2. And once we are done with this for loop, we simply return db of n. What is the time complexity of this approach? The time complexity of this approach is order of n. What is the space complexity of this approach? It's again order of n. The time complexity can't be reduced further. However, the interviewer might ask you to optimize on the space complexity. One typical way that all of us are aware of is to use two variables A and B and the purpose is served. However, what how can we optimize it over here itself? So what do you guys need to do? You need to count the number of variables that are getting used over here. So the count would be 0, 1 and here as well you will see 0, 1 variable and 2 variable. So in total we have used two variables. So what I'm going to do, I'll initialize this DP array to be of size 2. Now what I'm going to do, this is a most crucial step, listen to this very carefully. So I'm going to write modulus sign over here. So I modulus 2, again I'm going to write modulus sign over here as well I'll operate the index with the modulus of 2 because the number of variables that were getting used were 2 and since we have done that, what, what are we going to return? Again use the same operation modulus of 2. So let's try this up. Uh oh, typo. Let's try this up again. Accepted. And let's shoot for submitting this. And this says 100 times faster and memory usage is 87% less. This is quite close to constant time. And the takeaway here is you write your entire algorithm and then you count the number of variables that are getting operated upon. Here the count came as 2. You go to the equation that is basically doing the db manipulation and you put modulus to that num the count value across all these indexes. And again when you need to return the value you do a similar kind of thing db of n modulus 2. So internally, you don't need to take care how the manipulations are happening. You just need to write this modulus sign over the index and your work is done. Now you will ask me guys that how is this algorithm internally behaving? How is it giving us the correct result? We'll get to that point. But right now, let's try and apply this technique onto a different example. And the problem that I have chosen is another typical case of 1D DP, which is house robber. So uh, here we have given a nums array and in case you are not aware of house server, I am attaching its link in the description below. So do check that video first and then come back to this point. Here in this uh, solution we have written few corner cases if length is 0 we return 0, length is 1 we return nums of 0, length is 2 we return maximum of nums of 0 or nums of 1 and in case length is greater than 3 we create a DP array and we do the processing while iterating over uh, the DP array and we identify the maximum value that exists across our DPR and return the result. So the first and the foremost thing that we need to do is to count the number of variables involved. So the number of variables involved in the initialization step is 0, 1 and 2. So what do you need to do? You need to replace nums.length by 2, 3 because 3 variables are involved over here. And let's shoot for updating the core step which is line number 22. Since 3 variables are involved, 
we simply replace uh, this index by i modulus 3 and let's do it for the next index as well let's do it for the next index as well and remember you only need to update the dp indexes not the regular ones so this stays as it is next we have the variable over here and we are done so let's shoot for submitting this up accepted 20 times faster so let's not focus on the time complexity however the space complexity is pretty good it's less than 54 percent and the time the space complexity has been reduced from order of n to constant time and this is the power of this technique guys now let's get back to the point how is it actually behaving internally so let's shoot for it and let's use the trivial case which is fibonacci and let's assume the value of n that has been passed in the system is 5. So what do we, we will see that dp of 0 is initialized to 0, dp of 1 is initialized to 1. So we have both of these values set as 0 and 1 set as 0 and 1 right now. And let's start the for loop. We are at line 16, i happens to be 2 and this will give us dp of 2 modulus 2 is 0. So we'll be updating dp of 0 over here and it would lead to it's it would be equal to dp of 2 minus 1 is 1 1 modulus 2 is 1 so this gives us 1 plus dp of 2 minus 2 is 0 so dp of 0 right now is 0 so this gets updated to 1 that means dp of 0 is getting updated to 0 is, is getting updated to 1 so this gets updated to 0 and in case my value of n that was passed was 2 then in the end we would have exited this loop and what would have been the result it, the result would have been 2 modulus 2 which is 0 so the correct result would have been returned which is stored at the 0th index which is 1 so this would have led to the result which is 1 now let's shoot for moving on further wherein we are taking i value to be equal to 3 so let me just delete this up and this time i happens to be 3 and what would be this index is all to 3 modulus 2 happens to be 1 so deep uh, this time we'll be updating dp of 1 and it would be updated to let's shoot for the rhs side dp of 2 minus 1 modulus 2 that will give us uh, 3 minus 1 modulus 2 will give us 2 modulus 2 which is 0 so dp of 0 is 1 so this gives us 1 and this gives us 3 minus 2 which is 1, 1 modulus 2 is 1, so 1. So the value gets updated at dp of 1 index to 2 and in case we we had val n value passed as 3, what value would have returned from line number 23? It would have been 3 mi modulus 2 which is 1, so 2 would have been returned which is in sync with our expectation. Let's proceed ahead. Next let's take the case where i happens to be 4 and let's calculate the right hand side first so this is 3 modulus 2 plus dp of 2 modulus 2 so 2 modulus 2 is 0 and 3 modulus 2 is 1 so what is 0 and dp of 0 is 1 so let's replace 1 dp of 2 1 is 2 so let's replace 2 and this gets equal to 3 and 3 gets assigned to dp of 4 modulus 2 which is 0 so this gets assigned over here and in case the value n pa was passed as 4 what would have returned we would have returned 4 over here because 4 modulus 2 is 0 we would have returned 3 over here because 4 modulus 2 is 0 and this is the index which gets resolved so far so good let's walk through the last case where i'm taking i happens to be equal to 5 and dp of 5 modulus 2 is equal to dp of 4 modulus 2 plus dp of 4 modulus 3 modulus 2 and this gets us all to 0 so this value is 3 this gets us all to 1 the value is 2 so this in total sums up till 5 5 modulus 2 is 1 and that means we will be updating it over here 
and uh, what value would be returned the value that would be returned would be 5 modulus 2 which is uh, 1 so the answer that would be returned would be 5 again and if you carefully analyze this up then these modulus operations are alternately alternatively updating the values at 0 and 1 and this was the core intention that simply means that algorithm is, is working and this is what we do when we take a and b variables we explicitly swap those up with each iteration and using this modulus technique it has been taken care of internally so this is how it works and let me just comment this up and let's remove this too so let's try and re-submit it up accept it again 80 times for 7 percent faster constant space time with this let's wrap up today's session i hope you enjoyed it and learned something new and i have also have a good news to share with all of you which is about himanshu yadav he was one of the early subscribers of coding decoded he got through Caden system expedia goldman sachs and has finally joined microsoft and i'm super elated to break this news to all of you guys i missed uh, his message on linkedin and apologies for it and he just messaged me on telegram group that he has got through uh, these four companies super proud proud of you himanshu keep up the good work and keep shining guys over to you i hope you enjoyed this session if you did then please don't forget to like share and subscribe to the channel thanks for viewing it have a great day ahead and stay tuned for more updates from coding decoded i'll see you tomorrow with other fresh question and probably we'll be applying the same technique onto 2ddp and 3ddp very soon so stay tuned sayonara